there are very few areas as haunted as historical downtown Plymouth, Massachusetts. Most known for being the landing spot for the Pilgrims in 1620, and the home of the first Thanksgiving, school books fail to scratch the surface of the horrific and macabre events associated with the town. Despite school books romanticizing or omitting this time of American history, the town of Plymouth has countless tales of a very dark past. 400 plus years of Native American and Pilgrim spirits continue to haunt the town side by side. After desecrating Native American graves and firing upon the natives in what they called the first encounter, Miles Standish and 103 other pilgrims landed in Plymouth, Massachusetts on December 16th of 1620. When the pilgrims landed, they found an unnerving and gruesome sight. The village of the Patuxet tribe, now known as Plymouth, Massachusetts, had been ravaged by plague. All that remained were bones and skulls from the tribe. The decimated tribe could not keep up with the burial of their dead and resulted in human remains being left in plain sight. William Bradford was quoted in saying, Thousands of them died until the living were not able to bury the dead, and their skulls and bones were found in many places lying still above ground where their houses and dwelling places had been. After the harsh winter weather had forced the pilgrims to remain on the Mayflower, they decided to use the land that was already cleared by the native Patuxet tribe. It seemed like the most rational place for the pilgrims to settle, despite it essentially being a graveyard for thousands of the Patuxet people. Only 52 of the 104 Mayflower passengers had survived the first year, in fear that the natives would see the pilgrims as depleting and vulnerable. The pilgrims buried their dead on Coles Hill at night. They flattened the burial mounds, often hiding them with flowers and grain. Corpses were said to have been propped up at lookout locations to give the illusion that pilgrims were not in such a direful state. Bulls Hill is one of the first burial locations of the pilgrims, but to look at it today it appears as though it's almost a park, a hill overlooking Plymouth Rock. In March of 1621, first contact with Chief Massasoit and the Wampanoag tribe had happened. Massasoit visited the pilgrim settlement. At that point, two-thirds of the Wampanoags had been wiped out by yellow fever and plague. Massasoit reluctantly agreed to an alliance with the Pilgrims. The Wampanoag had also been attacked by the Narragansett tribe to their west and needed the mutual agreement, as did the Pilgrims. When more settlers arrived in 1622 in Wessagusset Colony, now known as modern-day Weymouth, word soon traveled south to Miles Standish that natives were planning attacks on the Europeans. He quickly called for a peace negotiation meeting with known native warriors Pexawat and Wittawamut, amongst others. Behind locked doors, and under the pretense of peace, Miles Standish stabbed them both to death. He then brought the severed head of Wittawamut back to Plymouth Colony, where it was placed on a stake atop the old fort on Burial Hill. Between 1735 and 1883, the remains of at least 11 settlers were recovered at Coles Hill. John A. Godwin said, In a storm of 1735, a torrent pouring down Middle Street made a ravine in Coles Hill and washed many human remains down into the harbor. In 1809, a skull with especially fine teeth was exposed. In 1855, these graves were exposed in laying conduit on Coles Hill. In one grave lay two skeletons, pronounced by surgeons as male and female. The male had a particularly noble forehead, and it was fondly surmised that here were the remains of Mr. and Mrs. Carver. These found a new grave on Burial Hill, but the other relics, with barbaric taste, were placed on top of the stone canopy over Forefather's Rock. 
1879, during some work on the southeast side of the hill, many more bones were unearthed, and some, with questionable taste, were carried away by spectators in remembrance of their renowned sires. The remaining bones of the pilgrims were gathered and put into a large sarcophagus at the top of Coles Hill. Few people realize that the severed head of King Philip, son of Massasoit, remained on display at the old courthouse for over 20 years, located mere feet from the church in Burial Hill. King Philip, or his real name, Metacomet, was the leader of a bloody and brutal war between the natives and the settlers called the King Philip's War. From 1675 and 1678, a combined 5,500 plus people died. King Philip's ghost is also said to haunt the courthouse and surrounding area, but he doesn't haunt the area alone. During a blizzard in 1778, the ship Brigantine General Arnold, filled with Union soldiers and captained by James McGee, dropped anchor by Gurnet Point, approximately one mile from Plymouth Harbor to wait out the storm. The ship ran aground and took on water. The crew was forced onto the deck of the ship and exposed to the nasty weather. For two days, people at Plymouth could not reach the ship to help. By the time help had arrived, for 72 sailors, it was much too late. Scenes of people frozen together, some clutching ropes, some clutching each other. Many of the bodies had to be thawed out in the town brook. Their bodies were then put inside the courthouse. Once the ground had thawed out, they were buried in a mass grave atop Burial Hill. Soldiers from this tragic event are said to haunt both the courthouse and Burial Hill. The sounds of melting ice are said to have been heard inside the courthouse. The very same floorboards where the bodies were kept remain inside the building to this day. Only feet from the old courthouse where Metacomet's head was on display for over 20 years. This stairway is said to be haunted by a woman named Mary, grieving her husband that she lost at sea. She has been seen and heard weeping. People have also reported being scratched, grabbed, and even escorted down the stairs and out of the graveyard. Many sightings of full-body apparitions occur in the cemetery. A mother and father dressed in Victorian-style clothing is said to be seen visiting the grave of their three-year-old daughter. During a tour through Burial Hill, people had noticed a man dressed in animal skins. When someone called over at him to get his attention, he turned around and had no eyes. He then vanished. The tour guide ran away shouting. The burial ground is said to also have native guardian spirits that live atop the trees in the graveyard. If the spirits don't think someone belongs there, they will absolutely terrify them until they leave. Located roughly 1,000 feet from Burial Hill is the Spooner House on North Street. Built in 1749, this is the home of Abigail Townsend, an eight-year-old girl who died from an infected tooth. She has been seen and heard by many people. She's been seen moving the curtains of one of the upstairs windows to peek out. Music has been heard playing while no one is inside. Some tourists have reported the little girl jumping rope in the alley to the side of the house. In 2005, Renovations began on the Spooner House. The crew was let inside by a little girl in colonial-style clothing. When the foreman arrived, he was shocked to see the workers already inside and working. When the foreman had asked who let them in, they said the little girl. After searching the entire house and no one being there, the freaked-out workers packed up their tools and quit. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Please hit the bell for notifications. Until next time.